This is an express patch out and I'm testing a procedure for an easy install of 6.5 update 1 EP04 right there kind of a mouthful but anyhow uh, it's the usual technique here where I talk about the advantages and drawbacks to ESX CLI com uh, commands and you can actually pull this straight from a web server or you can download the zip file into your temp directory with something like uh, well, whatever tool you'd like to use to move files in and out of your uh, ESXi host and then just run these same commands but instead of dash d from the web you just say forward slash tmp forward slash and whatever file name you download locally so these directions get all into that and they also try to convince you it's pretty easy uh, it is but it got a little long here because i have three optional steps you can just blow past them if you don't have that hardware okay so here it is let's do the upgrade i have already done a putty session to the esxi host all right and to document where i'm at versus where i'm gonna be let's have a look at the host Okay, so ESXi host client would be a great tool for that. Just using my web browser, pointing straight to the ESXi host. And on the main screen here, we can see our build number. All right, let's move along here. What are the commands? After you've opened up SSH and turned on maintenance mode, I have no other VMs running, so I don't actually uh, need to worry about that. I'm gonna go right here and triple click, right click, paste it in. Triple click, control C, and this is the big one. Right click, and now we wait. So it's actually pulling from the internet, and that first one is firewall rule to allow that to happen. Uh, this is, uh, again, an article focused on home labs, not for production. Um, and obviously, I'm network attached, so you would need an internet connection for this to possibly work. All right, so it gives me some warnings. You may or may not get such warnings. Depends on what drivers you have installed. So I'm going to go ahead and add to this. All right, so in my case, I've got some optional stuff I need to do. Uh, optional stuff being this hardware I have. Uh, it's an Intel Xeon D-based system, and I have some drivers, and it's warning me it's going to um, be blowing those away. So you need this optional OK to remove syntax. All right, so now I wait for it. I wait for it, and it takes a while, and when it's done, it's going to give me a whole screen echoing all the vibs that it installed, and then it'll be ready for me to either reboot or install some more uh, vibs that I might need for my system. So I'll explain that in a minute when this thing's done. I'm going to go ahead and speed up this section of video until it's giving me a control or cursor back again. So it finished. Now back to the article here. Another triple click. Control C, because I have 10 gig drivers, so I'm going to want my 10 gig drivers back. It actually back leveled my driver. So this will give me the driver that works with Intel Xeon D 10 gig interface. Again, I'm following this piece of instruction only because I own this hardware an Intel Xeon D with a 10 gig interface. That's why I'm following optional step five. Same goes for optional step six. The supported driver on this particular motherboard with the i350 chip right here is this driver. Control C, right click paste. All right, next. The Intel Optane P4800X. I happen to have that PCIe card I'm in the middle of testing. So it needs a driver for optimal performance, not the inbox driver included with the SXI65. So again, I triple click Control C and I'm ready to execute the very last command. So I have five, six, and seven, all optional. Most people watching this video are skipping those because they probably own some other hardware. You may have some device drivers or RAID controllers or whatever where after you reboot, you find you lost maybe SATA ports or something where you need drivers. Well, you're going to want to fix that. All right, that worked. It tells me what it did with the drivers. Very nice. And then finally, this last one for the Intel Optane. It's pulling that down as well. So this, for convenience, is coming from my server. Again, I make no guarantees about this. Uh, in production, you're absolutely going to want to log into my VMware and download these vid bundles yourself. You should not be downloading these from the web. Again, especially in a production environment. 
So you're proceeding at your own risk by following this video is what I'm saying, just as you are with any blogger who's written an article that doesn't claim to be, you know, vendor and officially supported. All right, that finished? Firewall, return the firewall to the state it's supposed to be in. Right click, paste, firewall's back. I'm gonna put this whole thing in a clipboard so I have a transcript of what we just did. As I did earlier, but now it's complete. It's got the whole session in there. All right, and now I'm ready to reboot. And I actually wanna get a uh, nice screenshot before I actually kick off the reboot. I've got that nifty screenshot and that's it. I'm ready to boot. So basically this tested my cut and paste skills. <laughs> it wasn't particularly difficult. Um, naturally, uh, we're gonna break the putty connection momentarily. You can bring up HTML5 remote control and you're actually gonna see the server rebooting. There you go, it's on the BIOS screen. ESXi is already, or the host that is running this is already restarted. And the putty connection of course broke just as I said it would. So now we wait when this machine's booting up, it briefly echoes a bunch of stuff about, you know, the various drivers loading. That's just normal. And what I'll naturally want to do is use something like ESXi host client, pointing my browser to the host name or IP of this server once it's rebooted and checking. Does my one gig and 10 gig interfaces seem to be working fine? Uh, does my Intel Optane, if I have one, seem to be working fine? And that's it. That's how we know basically we've done the express patch. We'll see from the build number in the ESXi host client. So the build number will show right at the top. Okay, server's back up. Time to fire up the host client. And uh, I suspect that is not still authenticated. There we go. All right, what do we want to check here? How about manage? Actually the main screen, sorry, host, the summary screen. We want to see the build number. So does the build number match what I'm expecting for express patch four? Okay, does that show in my article? I'm going to have to look that up. Let me just Google for that. Yes, express patch four, build number 664. There you go. All right, so that worked. That's third party, by the way, but it matches this third party, who's also a reputable source. Been using those guys for years for these patch numbers. Looks like that was found in Google before uh, VMware's own articles. Interesting. But anyhow, uh, we're done with the patching. Uh, testing functionality, do you want to check on well, networking physical NICs, good. Ten, so 10 gig is working, one gig is working. That's a good sign. How about storage? Intel Optane is showing, the data store is there. So that's also a good sign. And then of course the service console is what I'm using right now, the i350 uh, one gig interfaces. So I am done. This server has been patched. Uh, it wasn't painful, really. It uh, wasn't a big deal. Um, and now I've made it a little bit streamlined in that uh, it, the instructions are a little easier to follow if you have an Intel Xeon D. I would encourage you again to read the warnings, disclaimers, and all that before you just go blindly following this video. You really want to read the whole article. So hopefully you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching. And thanks for visiting tinkertry.com. <laughs>